from this place of praise into an ultimate place of worship. Hallelujah. And if you know the presence of God is here today, I need you to raise those hands and begin to release your worship into the atmosphere. Come on, everybody all around this building. Come on, begin to send up your worship. Welcome in this place. If you know the song, sing along with us. Oh, we welcome you, Jesus. Come in this place. Oh, say we give to the highest praise welcome in oh god welcome in this place come on i need you to raise those hands and open up those mouths and join us and sing welcome
place. Oh, welcome in this place. Yeah, yeah. I need to see everybody's hands raised in this house. In recognition of the power of God. Come on, say welcome in this place today. I need you to raise your hands in this house right now and just begin to send up your worship into the atmosphere begin to remove this roof with your worship open up a way begin to clear a way that a word might come we welcome you we welcome you Father, Father, we welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you, Father. Yeah. Father, we welcome you. Stay in this room with us, Lord. Continue to abide with us, Lord. Welcome, yeah. Father, we welcome you. We're depending on you for a word, Lord. Send healing today, Lord. Send miracles today, Lord. Welcome. Father, we welcome you. Now come on, open up those mouths. Lift those hands in the sanctuary. And begin to bless the name of Jesus. For he is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Somebody open up your mouth and begin to give him your worship. All over this building. Lord, Lord, Lord. Come on, somebody shout out his praises and his goodness. You are in his holy hill. We have gone into the strong tower. Come on, somebody worship him today. Father, we welcome you. and worship him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We welcome you, Lord. We welcome you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Clap those hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. At this time, I want to bring to the platform a group called Provident. I heard that they ministered last night. I heard it was such a blessing. They're coming back to us this morning. Clap those hands and thank God for them as they come. Hallelujah. of our Lord and Savior, Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Yes. Come on, give it up for the Lord. Give glory, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we bless your glory to God. Oh, we worship him on today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Bishop Francis and First Lady Francis, for the invitation. Thank you for allowing us to stand in this place and give God glory, because we're guaranteed to praise him. We're going to praise him, because God is worthy. Be blessed, every last one of you.
Have we got any witnesses out there? Hey! It reaches to the Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. 
Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood. Oh, my mother, not my father. Nothing but the hands thank God for this, this group hallelujah 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 mm. nothing but the blood thank God for the blood hallelujah hallelujah how many ready for the word but very quickly there's a number of cars that must be moved you've got to move them or they're gonna be towed away First one is M515 LBB Vauxhall Corsa and a YC52 ETF Vauxhall Silver. P826 KKE, that's a Mazda. A lot of them. A Fiat S948 CGC. P826 KKE. YC52 ETF M515 LBB S115 DGC Honda P213 CEJ and N418 GKN oh, There's more F397 PLE and P966 KKN, you gotta move them right now. Once when they go out, you won't see them. Hallelujah. Let's stand on our feet. We give you all. Come on, everybody. The glory. We worship. We The balcony everywhere. You are to be Everybody, as loud as you can. to be praised. Clap those hands and bless the name of our God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. This has been an awesome conference. How many of you have been so blessed? Oh no, you ought to do better than that. Thank God for 
the release that we have been receiving every night. Just hug somebody and tell them I love you and you can't do nothing about it. Absolutely nothing. Somebody give a Shabbat praise unto the Lord. Come on, you can praise him in here. You can bless him in here. Come on and magnify his name. The Lord is worthy to be praised. Somebody bless him. Come on and bless his name. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Grab a hold of your Bibles. I don't want to procrastinate. We have started something last night. Yes. Ah. And I feel pregnant. I want to deliver this baby today. Anybody got something that you know needs to come forth? Oh, pull your neighbor, say, neighbor, it has to come forth now. Amen. I want to honor the leadership of this house, my wonderful pastors, their wives, that leads this ministry alongside me, make me good. Come on, let's celebrate as we always do our leaders. Thank God for you. Thank God to see Minister Shakes and Pastor Shake, Mummy and Daddy Shakes and enemy has been attacking them, but they're here. We bless God for them this morning. I'm excited. Let me quickly do this. We want to thank God for the awesome woman of God that blessed us tremendously, anointed. Prophetess Marcia Morrison, we love you. We love you. God bless you. And our armor bearer, we thank God for you. We thank God for those that have come from Baltimore to be with us. We love you. We love you. Tell Pastor Jamal, my covenant brother, I love him. And it's good to have you. In fact, Marcia's um, armor bearer comes from uh, Bishop David Evans Church, another one of my covenant friends. And so it's good. You tell Bishop Evans I love him. He looks after me, watches over me, finds if I'm all right. He's a great friend and I love him. Oh, to all my spiritual sons that are here today, Pastor Delroy, God bless you. Pastor Josephine, uh, Pastor Nordine, I don't know. Pastor Jocelyn, stole away from Birmingham. This is good to see some of you stealing away from your service to be here. Uh, I know Pastor um, Young went back last night to continue the work. I, I just want to thank God for the greatest singers I've ever heard in my life. I'm serious. Everybody say, Bishop, why didn't you warn us? Well, you know, sometimes I talk too much. And when I talk, you all ain't impressed. But I knew this time I didn't have to testify. They would testify for themselves. Thank God for Providence from New Jersey. Love you. God bless you. Thank God for their bishop, Bishop Leo Smith. Am I right? Yes. Uh, who is an awesome man of God. And um, he is the bishop of the PAW of the islands. And they're having me to go over to Barbados again and do a big conference in Barbados. So all the Bajan people and dogs. Bajan people, all right. I was gonna tease you, but I better leave you alone. All it, no, no, no. Jam, jam, shut up. Master, when we, on all Americans, when we say jam, jam, that means Jamaicans. Church. And we thank God we're looking forward to going there and last time I was in Barbados we were in a church and there were more people outside than inside and we're looking forward to move into the major arena that they have there let's grab a hold of your Bibles quickly um, if you weren't here get the tape I can't procrastinate Habakkuk chapter 2 
verse 1 to 3, it says, I will stand on my watch, and he set me upon the tower, and will watch to see what he would say unto me, and what I shall answer when I'm reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain upon tables, that he that run, that readeth it, for the vision is yet for appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Look at somebody say it. Just for the continuation of scripture, would you quickly get, as we on this resurrection Sunday morning where the devil is defeated, Grab a hold of 1 Corinthians, because some of you still couldn't find Habakkuk. So, pretend like you were looking for something else, and now get to 1 Corinthians 2. I saw some people still turning, turning, you know, and I was already reading, and they were still turning, and now I gave another scripture, and you're thinking, oh, but I haven't even found the first one yet. Don't worry. Just go for Corinthians. Corinthians. Because Habakkuk, everybody, I was going to say is near Nahum, but you all would have problems with that too. Verse 8, it says, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8 says, Which none of the prince of this world knew, for had they known it, had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither has it entered in the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. But look at someone say, but is coming, but is coming. But is a conjunction, but is a change of statement. It's about to erase some stuff that was said before. It's about to take us into a new dimension. Everybody holler, but. Ah. But God has revealed them unto us. Look at somebody say, I got special information. Oh no, that was the wrong person. Find somebody who really believes what you're saying. Say, I got special information. No, 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 you got to say it if you know you got, you got high qualified information that nobody else got. Only those that understand there's something on your inside telling you that something is about to happen. You can't explain it. You can't articulate it. I need somebody in here to help me say something. But it's revealed to them unto us by the Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth. Everybody say, searcheth all the things, yea, the deep things of God. For those of you that weren't here, I want to continue on this subject. My it is on the way. Now, now, now you shouldn't have to get happy. I shouldn't have to beg you to get happy because you should understand what I'm talking about. Look at your neighbor and shout it again. Say, my it is on the way. Uh, uh, you, you, you might not know all what the it is, but you know it's on the way. And then I'll pull your neighbor, say, neighbor, I, 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 I can't help it, but I see something in the future, and it looks better than what I see right now. Now, excuse me while I have a Holy Ghost fit and scream for my it. Father, in the name of Jesus, anoint your word. Let your word be fixed in heaven. In the name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. Someone shout amen. amen. You may be seated. For those of us that weren't here, the word it is a prefix. It's inseparable, which means you cannot use the word it by itself. Anytime you're dealing with the word it, it has to always be connected to something. Everybody say connected to something. The word it, remember, speaks normally of an object or something that you cannot completely explain because you have not got the full detail of what the thing is. Somebody say, my it's on the way. Um, 
I spoke to you yesterday, I want you to understand this and not misunderstand me, that it is in our frustration, in our complaint, that God uses our frustration and our complaint to give us a revelation, to give us a illumination of what he really has for us. It's when we become uncomfortable about our present situation, then God decides that we are qualified for the next dimension that he's called us to. God shows you a vision. And when God shows you a vision, remember in the book of Habakkuk, the first thing he said, write the vision, document it. Uh, and then he goes on after he says this word vision and brings us into a whole lot of statement telling us, make it plain, write it on tables, read it, and then it says the vision is for an appointed time, but it shall speak, <sighs> it shall not tarry, wait for it, <laughs> it shall surely come to pass, and it won't delay. I want you to know that your it has a mouth. Your it is getting ready to speak to the people who don't believe that God gave you a vision. The Bible says here that we should write the vision, make it plain. Because whenever God is trying to do something to us, he gives us a picture, and we as human beings see things pictorially. We see things in pictures. If you want to remember anything, uh, one of the things um, they teach you about exercising your memory, it's best to remember things pictorially. Remember colors, associations. Whenever God begins to use John, he begins to explain and he uses natural things that he is aware of to paint a picture that we could understand. He says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard a voice behind me say, come up higher. Now, he was having a problem trying to explain this and then he is telling them, every time in the book of Revelation, I saw something and he says it was like unto. He always uses something that we are familiar with that we can understand the full picture. That is why God has allowed you to see some stuff that other people has that you ain't got to give you a picture what you can achieve in life. Uh, the important thing is never to get stuck on what you see other people have. Because what they have is only an introduction. Oh, I wish I had someone here to help me today. It's only an introduction for what God is getting ready to give you. Look at someone say, he's getting ready to give me something. Everybody say, my it's on the way. Now, when you begin to notice this in Corinthians, the Bible says here, that God has a way of bringing things to us, the Christians, and he does this by revealing things that are hidden by the way of the Spirit. Mm, it's so important for us to understand to be spiritual is to have an insight of things that are not visual, things that have not been unfolded. To be spiritual is to see in the unknown world things that people cannot perceive and cannot see. <laughs> uh, God, now this is a place to get happy. God made sure that he gave unto us his spirit so that he can channel some information to us by bypassing the devil so that he cannot understand the fullness of who you really are. 
I, I feel something pushing me. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help myself. What you don't realize is that you are more than what people see. I wish I had someone who understand what I'm saying. You, you, need, you need to respond to this prophetic word because everything I'm, I'm releasing is about to shoot you into another level. Did you hear that? Let me say it one more time. I want you to understand that you, 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 you got to understand the dimension that you're in is that God has connected you to the spirit realm so that you can see stuff, feel stuff, hear stuff that nobody else can hear. That's why when we're going through hell and we're supposed to be depressed, something kicks in inside of us. Uh, is there anybody know what I'm talking about? And tell us, dry your tears, because weeping may. I need you, Nick. Endure for a night, but joy. I, I, I need somebody here to help me because I, I look at someone and say joy is coming in the morning whenever the Bible talks about morning it talks about a new start it means whatever happened last night is in last night but God says I'm getting ready to make a new day in your life pull your neighbor say it's a new day it's a new day uh, and, and, and the Bible says here that God tricked the enemy and said, okay, go ahead, kill me. Crucify me. Laugh at me, put a crown of thorns on my head, and bury me. But just remember, I am God of the universe. And I'm going to rise again. And the Bible says here, which none of the princes, oh, that's something I can't even get into. The princes of this world. Oh, that's too good. That's too good. That's too good to just let it walk. The, 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 the princes of this world. Y'all ain't got this. I, I mean, You've got to understand that there are demonic powers that are operating in this world to frustrate your purpose and destiny. And they think because they are prince, they have power over this world. But when you step into the kingdom of God, God's sovereign power, it cancels out whatever demonic power uh, listen here that was reigning over your life I, I, I ain't got time to talk about this it said it had the, it had the prince of this world knew for had he had known it had he had known it now when the word it is used it's because you can't quite explain who the it is because the it is not just Jesus, not just the Holy Ghost, not just the Father, but the Savior of the world, the Emmanuel, the God with us. Had they had known it, had they had got the information, had they had got the full picture, they would not have done what they had done. But the Bible says, but it, it is written eyes have not seen see what the problem is is that you got to move from what you see naturally to see stuff that's not visual in the natural realm but is visual in the spiritual realm uh, eyes have not seen uh, ears have not heard neither is it entered in the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them, but it's been revealed unto a certain group of people by the Spirit. I, I want to break this down because I want you to understand here, the word here where it says, it has not entered into the heart of man. When you begin to translate 
from that Hebrew word, or the Greek word rather, of entered into the root word, which brings us to a place. When it says entered into, it talks of the word ascension. It means to go up. Everybody say to go up. Everybody say to rise up. So the word there, you're not talking about something coming sideways. You're talking about something going up. And then the Bible says it has not entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. For, uh, prepared for them that love him. It has not entered things that God had prepared for them. They can't see it. They can't hear it. And the word heart there is a, a word called cardia, which is not the word that we think to do with the heart this time. It's to do with the mind. What I'm trying to tell you is, look at someone say, work with Bishop. He's going to get there. He's going to get there. He's going to get there. I need, I need you to, I need, I need, I need, I need to kill a demon before I get to where I need to. Because, because some of you don't realize who you really are. So I need to, I, I need to, to, to annihilate and to, to erase some stuff. It has not entered into the cardia, the, the, the mind. The things that God has set up and, and completed for those that love him. Oh, it has not got, because you see, in order for it to get there, there has to be an ascension. And it has to go beyond the realms of your mind and your emotions. And something has to hit your head. That is why, <laughs> this is why the scripture says this. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty. I need somebody to talk to me tonight. They're mighty this afternoon, this morning rather. They're mighty through God for what? Pulling down strongholds. What are they? Imagination, images that exhaust itself. Well, you got to understand, God's getting ready to release something in you, but there's a blockage in your mind stopping you from understanding the full picture of what God has for you. I, I need to talk to somebody. Grab everybody, put your hands on your head and say, I got to renew my mind. No, 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 you got to say a bit loud. Say, I got to renew my mind. Let me tell you something. You know what some of your problem is? God's getting ready to bless you, but you're still thinking of the old thing when God's trying to move you into a new thing. All right, all right, let me tell you something. I was first living in a certain area. The area where I was living in was okay. But the people in the area where I used to live were just brash, horrible, the education in the school, in the area, was not as good. I thought it was good. But when I moved into another area, the first thing I noticed is that everybody on the street was saying good morning. Now, for those of you that come from the West Indies or from Africa, you understand what I'm talking about. I, 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 and, and even some of you from America, you remember back in the years when you used to live, the people you would have, hello, good morning, how you doing, sir? I mean, now... Some of you are living next to people who you don't even know. Oh, you ain't talking to me. Are oh, you understand what I'm saying? The kind of fellowship that you once have is not there. Now, when I moved into a certain area, I realized that the area which I moved into, I had to reevaluate my mind because how I was living before 
the way I used to carry on, the area was not conducive for that kind of behavior. Now, I know some of y'all say, well, praise the Lord, Bishop, you get an opportunity to live in a certain area. I'm still living in, you know, the projects. I'm in, I'm in, the, I'm in a flat and what have you. Praise God, he's got a house. You, all, you, all, you see, y'all lost it. Y'all lost it. You, you missed it. Because what, what happened is, you see, is that I'm trying to prepare you for a move that you, I'm trying to prepare you. I got a brother. I got a brother that testified to me just a minute ago and I'm going to get him to talk to you tonight who I prophesied and, and, and one miracle service that the Lord was going to give him a house and, and want some stuff and, 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 and the reason why you get a prophecy is because God was getting ready to reevaluate some things and change some things in your life see some of you don't know who I am you just see me as John oh yeah I'm nobody you don't even believe that I'm a prophet you don't believe that every Sunday when I speak to you it's spirit and life but I come to let you know that I don't stand here on my own accord I stand because there is a charge there is an anointing on my life to push you into another dem look at your neighbor just push him lightly say I'm pushing you uh, yeah yeah I'm pushing you I, I, I'm pushing you I'm pushing you to a place where I have to first change your mindset oh yeah 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 I gotta change your mindset you know some of you are having some cause that you know is giving you trouble it ain't doing no good for you and you are too proud to get on a bus but I realize that you got to tell yourself sometimes the thing I'm driving I'm better than this and there's nothing wrong with taking a bus for a season it's an indication to God God I need a car and I need a car that's gonna help me to get me where I need to go. Everybody say, change your minds. Change your mindset. Oh, no, 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 you ain't saying it loud. Change your mindset. Change your mindset. People don't like, they, they, they have a problem with our churches. They have a problem. They come, oh, you go down Ruach Ministries. Everybody got good cars down there, good houses down there. Everybody looking good and just and fine. Oh, they're so critical about how you are and how you look. And oh, yeah, don't give your money to these church people. Oh, they're taking your money. And they have so much to say. And maybe some of the things they say is true. Maybe. Maybe it's true. But as my bishop said, and I, I have to quote this, and I thought it was good. I am suspicious of people who seems to be pulling us down, who was nobody. And God all of a sudden made us somebody. And they have a problem with the fact that I've moved up. You know why I'm suspicious? Because they don't criticize the people who's forcing you to do the lottery. Your friends don't talk about the drug dealer that's driving a big car and selling everybody the drugs. But the moment you got saved, now, now I know you don't want to say anything. I know you don't want to say anything. But here, I know Sky TV is here and I need Sky TV to hear it. Because I'm sick and tired of them giving us the negative of church. Somebody needs to understand that God saved me because he put an it inside of me. Your enemies don't like you and you ain't even got what you got. God hasn't done all the stuff he promised you. If they hate you now, you might as well get happy because they're really going to hate you. Ah, Jesus. Everybody say, transform your mind. Transform your thoughts. The problem why a lot of people can't get nothing is because your brain is saying you ain't qualified for it. Can, can I testify to you? Can I? Because I need to bring it to a place where you can understand. I got so much notes, but let me just forget that and talk to you from my heart. When I, 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 I got the prime minister at the church and I was going to speak, it's a different speaking when you speak on a Sunday preaching and you got the media there. And I'm thinking now, oh God, I ain't like co-pastor Penny. 
I'm a homeboy, you know, just, just don't speak all the right words when I'm ready. I get it all mixed up, the nouns, the pronouns. Come on, talk to me. Hello? You hear me every Sunday. And I, every now and then, I get mixed up, muddled up, tongue-tied. And I'm saying, God, you got a sense of humor. See, what you got to understand is that some of you don't know what heaven is about to decree over your life. Because the people who know how to do it, God says, I can't use them because they're not going to trust in me. Because they think they can do it by themselves. But there's some of us that knows that if it not been for God, if God didn't step in. All right, all right, all right, all right. Everybody say it's on the way, it's on the way. Everybody say, renew your mind. Uh -huh. Your thoughts need to rise from carnal thinking to spiritual thinking. You need to rise from being governed by the flesh and being governed by the spirit. When your mind is renewed, you will see things spiritually. You will see things that have not happened in the natural you will see things that people say is impossible for you to get. You will see it. Everybody say, you will see. Oh no, that wasn't loud enough. Everybody say, you will see. Now, why do I need to see it? Why do I need to see it? Let me tell you why I need to see it, because... As I said, it is an object. It is always connected to something. A vision is a preview of what's to come. But you're not allowed to see everything. All right, all right, all right. Let, let, me, let me give you this scripture. The Bible says here, uh, when I was a child, when I was immature, I spake as a child, 1 Corinthians you know that, verse 11 and 12, verse 12. Uh, I thought as a child, the capacity of thinking is completely different when I become mature. I start to realize that I'm of age. I start to revalue things differently. The experience of life then prepares me for what I'm about to deal with in the future. That is why the devil is frustrated. Because God uses the devil to make a way for my future. He uses the devil to do some stuff to me that he thinks is hurting me. But it's all for what I need for the future. <laughs> uh, all right. Everyone's asking this question. Let me tell you. I wanted to share this with you. Everybody's asking the question, how did you get the prime minister at your church? I had political people who were very upset because they said, we've been working on this and how did you do this? Let me tell you about my it. <laughs> when I went to America, anybody remember Freddie Laker? Thank God for Freddie Laker. Went on a plane and went to America for the first time, I was a troubled child, a child that used to misbehave. They wanted to take me out of the school. I was not as good as how you see me right now. <laughs> One of my teachers is a member of my church, so she knows what I'm talking about. She, has, she said, Bishop, I saw all your notes. <laughs> I won't tell you who she is, because she said, Bishop, every time you say that, you make people know how. You guys are wicked. <laughs> but what I want you to understand is when I was at school, listen to this, when I was at school, I wasn't as good as I was and struggled. My parents took me to America because my mother believed that it may help me and I always was just, 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 I was crazy about gospel music. And so I went there and I remember went to Waycross, Georgia, and I went to Firstborn Church of the Living God. That was before 
uh, uh, we, we were Kojic and then we became independent and then we joined with First Born Church of Living God and then I went there and when I went there and I heard gospel sing I met the first time I met Douglas Miller and then I came back and I wanted to start a gospel choir which was the inspirational choir you all remember those days the choir that I had got me into venues that I would never believe I would be in got me shaking hand with the queen, got me into number 10 Downing Street. Years ago, the private secretary of the prime minister, and these are this private secretary at number 10, who's been around from the days of Margaret Thatcher, used to come to my concerts, And he works at number 10. I thought I was just doing a choir. But God says, I'm setting you up. See, that's why some of you don't realize you're doing something that don't make sense. But you don't understand the full picture that God's only doing this it. Everybody say, do it, do it, do it, do it. All right, all right, that's number one, number one. So I got, I got connections. One of the things I wanted to be made clear, although I know him, I have never used him because I know him. I've never phoned him up. Even when the prime minister was coming up, I didn't use my relationship. I'm gonna help somebody. I didn't use my relationship. Can let me just tell you something. You don't need nobody to help you out when God's getting ready to bless you. So stop trying to run down people to try and do things for you. Because if people does it for you, then they are gonna take the praise. But when God does it, he gets ultimate glory. Let me navigate through this real quickly. So that the thing is that um, I, I kept on doing what I was doing and, and what have you. So strategic something is in there. This is now, this happened in the 90s, right? Or, or 80s, 80s. So or from the 80s till now, God has a man in there sitting down in a job for me. And then the Lord says to me, you all remember this, Rurak, once a year have prayer for the nation. And I remember some of my good friends were saying to me, Bishop, I hear you have these prayer, why don't you allow the media to come in? And I said, no, because I didn't want people to think I was manipulating the situation. The Lord said to me, just encourage the leaders, encourage. Then later we started to see MPs coming, it was local, and then all of a sudden MPs, by the way, for those of you from America, MPs are senators, senators. They all came in and they were coming in and I was preaching to them, laying hands on them. The mayor decided that when he was having his inauguration, he didn't want to do it a traditional way. He came to Rurak Ministries, that I would lay hands on him, oh God. So powerful it was that the police department, the police commander says we are not going to put no police in the area of Lambeth at all until they first come to Rurek Ministries and I lay hands on them and put oil. Never happened before. Now our local MP got promoted to be the parliamentary secretary for the prime minister. So I have one in number 10, 